What's up, everyone? Freedom of Fit as near from Holistic Songwriting. Welcome to whatever this is. I don't really have a name for it. Anyways, we're going to talk about five common misconceptions about songwriting that may or may not hinder you in your work. All right, so let's go. Okay, so the first misconception I get quite a lot is that people seem to think that songwriting equals lyric writing. Honestly, like so many people that I talk to, especially people who don't have a musical background, seem to think that songwriters, all they do is write lyrics. Like I'm a songwriter, my lyric writing is probably my weakest area. Like that's something where I'm, uh, there's definitely better people out there than me. I think where, where my strength lies really in melody, harmony, uh, arranging structure, telling a story, that's kind of what I'm good at. A, a musical story that is not so much a lyrical story. Now I can write lyrics, I'm not horrible at them, um, but it's just not what I really focus on when I'm talking about songwriting. So I think it's just a really interesting um, part of, you know, the, 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 the common image of songwriting that people seem to think it's all about writing poetry and then um, they think of songwriting as just like, oh yeah, you find a couple of chords and then you sing the poetry to whatever you've written, which is just totally not the case. In my case, um, the approach is really the other way around. I start with the music. I kind of have a melody before I even have lyrics. Sometimes that goes hand in hand a little bit, but typically the melody rules all for me. Like I'll definitely change a lyric if, um, if the melody doesn't work quite as well yet, but I'll probably not change a really well working melody in favor of the lyrics. The second misconception I get all the time is that people say, especially about pop music or commercial music, um, that it is too simple. They think of simple as something bad or something that is really easy to do. When in reality, simple in music is definitely not easy. Um, so for me, writing a pop song that is just super straightforward, that it has only three or four elements is the hardest thing to do. I think there's really nothing more difficult than writing a consistent, great pop song that works when you just have four things that you can work with, right? If you have a whole orchestra of, of musicians, it's so much easier to like, you know, manipulate energy to, to add in hooks and all that stuff. It's so much easier because you can always overwhelm people and that way create tension and energy and all that stuff. If you only have four instruments, well, the thing is, each one of those individual parameters has to be perfectly set. You need to design each individual element perfectly. And usually the thing I tell people when they say like, oh yeah, pop, pop music is so simple, is I say, well, nobody's ever complained about the Apple logo being simple, right? Because it is just perfectly designed. It's just what it needs to be. And that's exactly what's so hard about pop music. You always have to figure out like, do I really need this element or could it possibly go? Does it add to what's already there or is it something else and it's kind of distracting from what's already there? So it's always that kind of balance that we have to strike for in pop music. And that's, I think, what makes it so very challenging. You can't hide behind overwhelm. Everything that we hear, we hear, you know? We're not listening to an orchestra and if the second oboe plays a wrong note or plays something that's really not that well written, it doesn't matter, right? If we're listening to a pop song, we hear everything. And so everything needs to sound perfect, so that's the production side of it, and it also needs to be written extremely well so that and this is another part of, um, of our modern culture is that we loop a lot of things. If we have a section that is extremely well written, it will not get boring if we, leap, if we loop it 40 times throughout our song. The third misconception that I see all the time is people talking about that one idea, you know, having that breakthrough moment when you write your song. And, you know, this is furthered by certain stories that we hear from the Rolling Stones and, and other artists um, where they say they sat down and wrote the song in like 30 seconds or two minutes or three minutes or it's these ridiculously short amounts of time. What people don't really tell you is that they were able to do that kind of thing because they have been writing songs for years and years and years, making them very, very quick at certain decision points within their songwriting process, right? So if they, they play a couple of chords, they already know like, I'm not gonna do this, 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 and they know I'm not gonna do this, 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 or this, or this with the melody, right? So it makes it a lot easier for them to find something once they have an initial idea. What I think is especially dangerous about this misconception that you all, all you need is just this one idea. People, especially beginners in songwriting, tend to listen to songs and think of the song as just a, connect, uh, um, a collection of hooks. 
And that's just not what it is. And unfortunately, there's some songwriting courses and some songwriting teachers out there who further this idea, who just say it's all about the hook, which is just not true. Because setting up a hook is almost more important than what the actual hook is. And I would argue that there's some pop hits out there that use hooks that aren't that great, but they're set in scene so well, like the lighting and the position of the camera is so great that they just come across as if they were this real killer hook. And if you listen to some of the, the greatest hooks uh, of the last century, some of them are just really quite simple and maybe a little boring, but the way they are placed within the song and how their energy kind of transforms, um, like conveys the message to us, like tells us like, this is an amazing hook. And if you actually listen to the hook, maybe it's not that great. It, it kind of feels as if they are. It feels as if we are hearing a great hook, even if maybe the production or the, the rest of the songwriting or the arrangement or the structure are actually what convey that thing to us. So it's not all about that one idea. The real challenging part of songwriting is not having a great idea. That's maybe the most difficult part. I, I wouldn't even say it's difficult because it's something that just happens or it doesn't happen. You just write a lot of songs and every hundred songs or so you have an idea that just really is great. But it's more of a luck thing, really. It's not, I wouldn't even call it difficult. It's really just luck. Every once in a while you get one of those ideas. But the hard part about songwriting is finishing a song, is taking that idea and transforming it into an actual musical experience that has its ups and downs, that something that drives you through the song, something that keeps your attention. If you're interested in that kind of thing, I've written an entire book about this very thing called The Addiction Formula, which I have here, coincidentally. This is the book. You can get that one on Amazon. Um, that's what the whole book is about, all right? Moving on. Another misconception I hear quite regularly is that music is or is not subjective. So let's start with the idea that music is subjective and that all mu music, like, it's all down to taste. And of course, there's a huge sizable portion of music where things do come down to taste. But there are certainly songs that are better written than others. There are certain things that we as a society have really come to accept that make a song better or worse. So for example, if we're looking at performance, uh, if someone performing a vocal melody, we've come to accept that it is better if the singer is performing on pitch and in time than if they're not, you know? If they have a nice vocal sound, we have come to accept that that's usually better than not. And of course, there's always exceptions to the rule. Like for example, if we have someone like Kurt Cobain, who didn't have those things, but had so much emotion behind it that that kind of evens it out. You know, it's a different kind of thing, but it still works. Each genre has its own kind of set of rules, but there are certainly some kind of rules that we as a society have kind of implanted into, into music, and that's kind of the accepted norm. And so there, we can certainly talk of some songs being better than others. Uh, than others. And for example, I think as songwriters, um, it is our duty to kind of um, get to that point where we can listen to a song and maybe be able to say, you know, it's not my thing, I don't really like it, but it is really, really well written. I have this very thing, for example, with the Lion King movie by Disney. Everyone loves that movie. It's probably my least favorite Disney movie. It's a great movie. It's just really not for me. But I think we have to learn to, to accept that difference, that we can not like something and it can be really well done at the same time, all right? So the other end of the spectrum was music is uh, not just subjective, right? Um, people saying that um, it's all about rules, which is not really true. So this brings me kind of to my fifth misconception, which is um, thinking that there's that music consists of uh, is is all theory, it's all formulas, rules. There's a right way to do things. What I always try to get across as a point to my viewers is. It's all about how you frame things. You can pretty much do anything. I think honestly, you can do everything. It's just a question of how you frame it. You know, there's a song for everything. There is a technique for everything. You can use everything in almost every genre. It's just a question of how you get it across to your listener. So for example, uh, in I had a song once that was kind of this crazy um, alternative metal song. It was really high energy, really, heavy, really distorted. And I wanted to have something um, crazy for the bridge as well, so it fit the rest of the song. I mean, and I also wanted something that is kind of lower in, in energy, so the last chorus could really stand out again. 
But also, I didn't want to really go down in energy. I didn't want to lose the, the craziness of it all. So the thing that I came up with at the end of it all was I wrote a section that where the music basically stops and uh, the music actually stops through a kind of tape stop effect and we hear someone rustling around with the tape, kind of turning over the tape and, and kind of mumbling as they're doing so. And we hear um, them turning the tape over and we hear like an orchestral shitty sound coming from, these, um, from this tape deck, right? So we have this kind of like this wobbly tape sound. And after a while, uh, that just stops and then we go into the last chorus. So it's this really random found sound kind of bridge that doesn't make any sense musically. It's something I would never be able to replicate live if I were ever have to play this uh, song live. It's just ridiculous. It doesn't make sense. There's no songwriting book ever that talks about this specific technique. And yet in the song, it works really well. So that I think just goes to show that um, there is no rules, you can really pretty much do everything unless, uh, you, the only thing is you have to know how you use it and why you're using it. When I went to a conservatory, I had this crazy idea that once I go there, there was gonna be a class and a, my teacher is gonna tell me something along the lines of, today, melody is one-on-one, -on -one. here's how to write a very simple melody. And then it just goes through, um, through my entire study time like that. And at the end of it, I'm like a professional songwriter. And it just doesn't happen. It's not how it works. Most universities, the way they teach songwriting is you sit together in a room, you bring them, bring a song in, and they give feedback, or you talk about songwriting, but it's usually never that uh, formulaic. It's not that theory-driven as you might think. And I really believe that there are no real formulas for um, melody writing and stuff like that. Personally, for me, for holistic songwriting, I try to find formulas to make things a little bit easier, but it's not possible to just write a melody on paper without ever thinking about what, what it's gonna sound like in the real world, so to say. I don't think that is possible. I don't think it should be possible even. I think songwriting should still come down to bringing your personality into the picture and rearranging notes and rearranging rhythms in such a way that at the end of it, you have something that represents who you are as a person and as an artist. And I think that's really the special thing about music that we should never forget. So that is my five common misconceptions about songwriting. Let's summarize real quick. Number one, songwriting is not lyric writing. Number two, simple is not easy. Number three, it's not all about that one idea. Number four, music is not just subjective. And number five, thinking that there's rules, theories, formulas, or a right way to do things is also quite wrong. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe the usual. Also, you can check out my Patreon link below this video in the description uh, where you can ask me questions and send in songs for feedback. So that's quite cool. Um, and it's really the best way to get in touch with me one-on-one -on -one if you wanna ask me, you know, whatever is on your mind right now. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and stay gefährlich.